So, hello friends, how are you? Welcome back to our great session with Dr. Khalid from Egypt. So, this is a common session that we both agreed to so that we can, you know, clarify the doubts about MTI medicine. So, without further ado, Dr. Khalid, welcome to the channel, welcome to the talk. Thank you so much for giving your precious time. Uh, please tell us a little about yourself, who you are, like, and like where you hail from and your specialty and everything, please. Welcome you all people and thank you Dr. Amand for uh, hosting me today. I'm very pleased to be on your channel and have this video trying to help people and how the process of MTI going and I hope this session will help you to understand everything about the process. Mm -hmm. uh, let me introduce my first, myself first. I'm uh, Khaled, I'm an Egyptian doctor, graduated in 2007. Uh, after that, I worked in Egypt for many years, maybe five, six years in the field of general medicine, gastroenterology. And over the last four years, I've been working in Saudi Arabia, actually in the uh, emergency medicine field. So uh, I applied to the MTI scheme. I managed to secure my first job in the NHS through the MTI scheme. And I'm here today trying to help you. I'm hosted by Dr. Aman, and I'm very pleased to join him today. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Khalid. Welcome, welcome again. So before I proceed ahead, the most basic question I think that you would also have heard while preparing for AMTI interviews, why do you want to come to the UK? So what was your answer to this, you know, very, very simple question? Yeah, uh, actually, I know that most of the people will watch this video probably will be from countries like Egypt, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, like that. And it's very, difficult question to answer why you want to move to the uk it's hard difficult complicated it's different community of course uh, different culture than we are used to in our home country but i think main issue for most of us is to gain much experience in a very developed country especially of course in the field of medicine uh, whether we want to stay there for a long or have just a period of experience and return back to our countries but I think it will be a very good journey to have. Okay. So how did you come to know about the MTI? If you want me to tell you my story, actually, I was planning to move to the UK through the lab. But during the year I'm processing my lab, 2020, the COVID year, of course, I, three of my exams have been canceled. So I thought that I'm eligible for MTI. Why I didn't process to the why I don't process to the MTI scheme? I'm eligible. I have everything needed to, to the MTI. So it's you know it came all of a sudden. I applied to the MTI and I found that all the eligibility criteria I have it already. So I started applying my MTI process and Alhamdulillah I managed to secure my third job. And, that's good. Uh, that's that's check. great. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, as I said, most of the colleagues like who are texting us, like even like you know, the videos you've made about MTI, main the main mm -hmm. concern with people amid this pandemic is like they're not getting slots for the examinations or the exams are getting cancelled. So yes. the MTI is like at least for the Royal College of Physicians is still recruiting people. So it's actually a good, you know, substitute, at least for people like us, you know, who have some experiences in their country, you know, they've worked like quite some time, like we're not fresh graduates and not, uh, like we're not the consultants. So we're somewhere in the between. So yes, I think M MTI is a very, very good alternative. Uh, but the only drawback that I felt was, you know, that two years uh, stringent visa pattern. So what do you think about it? Like, uh, like how, how is it going to like affect your future plan? Is it good? What do you think? Like, Actually, it's misunderstanding. I don't know why some people think that after two years, you have to leave the kingdom uh, and return back to your home country. I think that was the plan initially for MTI in the first years of the MTI scheme. But I think after a few years of starting the MTI scheme, uh, the NHS or not the NHS, actually the Royal College of Physicians, they've changed their plans because, you know, they are in shortage of, of doctors. And they said, why we bring these people, teach them, give them some experience and let them go back to their countries. We need to use them in our NHS. And I think in the last few years, it's not mandatory that you return back to your country after finishing the two years 
actually it's from six months to two years. Uh, and I think now you still manage to continue in the UK without leaving yet to your home country. There is another thing actually, most of people don't know about it, that you can travel to the UK through the MTI scheme on tier two visa, and it's not necessary to be on tier five. So, you know, uh, on tier two visa, these years will be counted as uh, for your ILR and citizenship after that. So that's a very, very interesting thing you've brought up because the whole, like uh, currently I'm on a tier two visa post uh, because uh, I got through an alternative path. Uh, so that same concern I had in my mind because when you're traveling with your family, you know, you know, you, you've yeah. got so many concerns, like you'll have to travel back and all. And plus the two years that you're spending here won't be like counted for your ILR in case you're looking for a long term plans. So this is a very, very interesting thing that, uh, you know, I have just come to know that the MTA also gives a tier two option. Like that's what you're saying. Yes. Yes, that's true. And most of people don't know about that. Uh, you can have tier two visa when you travel to the UK through the MTI. Oh, great. Uh, to be honest, I also didn't have an idea. <laughs> really? First time for you two to know about that? Yeah, yeah. Of, of course, like I, I knew specific trust, like who would be directly recruiting you. They may like opt in for the, you know, they can sponsor you a tier two visa. Like for me, like the trust I'm working now, they would directly sponsor you a tier two visa. But I That's didn't true. knew that the, even, you know, with the Royal College, you would get that. All right, uh, there's one more query for people. Like, yeah, like most of them were texting me like the Royal College is not recruiting and all and all. So how do you cope up with this? Like uh, since you, you managed to get a slot, like what, what were your like, uh, you know, learnings or what would you like to tell more people? Yeah, yeah. There are actually two routes for the MTI. I explained them uh, in my video before on my YouTube channel. Uh, there are two routes you can go through the MTI. Uh, route A, which is that you ask the MTI that, uh, sorry, you ask the RCB to recruit you and find a job for you. Uh, they will be the body that will make the interview with you. But actually, 10% of people going through the MTI, going through this route, which is the most common, the most famous, and people think that this is the main route to secure a job through the MTI. But the other route, which is 90% of people go through, um, is that you have to make your own NHS profile and you start to apply for jobs on the NHS. Of course, this is a, another issue. We can make a video later how to make your own uh, NHS profile and how to apply for jobs. But you have to write clearly in your application that you are applying through the MTI scheme. Also, have to remind the consultant during the interview that you are applying to the job through the MTI scheme, so he will give you uh, his uh, uh, answer if MTI is applicable for applicable for the job or no. If you manage to pass through the interview and you secure your job with the trust, you take the conditional job offer, all your papers, uh, the occupational English test, and your past experience, your postgraduate uh, certificate, you know, all the eligibility criteria, you can find it on the official website and go to the RCB and asking them that you are eligible because you have like that, like that, like that, and you, are, you now have a job offer. And ask them if they could be able to sponsor you through the MTI, and most of cases they will say, yes, we can sponsor you and give you sponsorship to the GMC, GMC for registration. What would your advice be for like people, you know, like uh, many of uh, people texted me like they have not been successful in their first interview. Like it happens like a couple of interviews go back you get lagged in some of the things and, you know, people would simply give up like, no, this is not working. This is not happening. Well, well, what's hmm. your view on this? Because uh, honestly, I also gave four interviews uh, before I took this place. Uh, I would say all of them went well, all of them had given their job offers, but it's eventually you who takes up the, you know, ladder, which way you want to go. So what's your suggestion? Because see, I, I'm from emergency medicine. I had a mm -hmm. different experience, which I had already shared, but like for internal medicine or like the field you're coming from, what's your suggestion? Like if, if people are not getting successful for interviews, like one or two, what laggings they can improve and, you know, how can they improve their chances of getting selected? Mm -hmm. Be calm, be calm, 
be calm. First thing that when you have when you have your interview, you don't you don't want to be nervous. Okay, you try to be calm as much as you can. Uh, be simple. When they ask you, try to be simple, and go to the common things first. Most of the interview, it will pass through three stages. First stage that you uh, introduce yourself. Uh, you should get prepared well to how to introduce yourself, how to sell yourself in the first three or four minutes of the interview. After that, they will ask you some specific questions about the ethics. Ethics, most of them are ethics and your past experience, how to deal with angry patients, how to how to work in a, in a teamwork, something like that. Actually, things like that, we are not get used to have it in a very organized way in our countries. I mean by our countries in the area here, India, Egypt, Bangladesh, Pakistan, I think four countries almost all the same in this field, but it's different in the NHS. They will ask you some specific questions. Uh, you have to be ready about it. After that, they will ask you some medical questions. My advice for you regarding these medical questions, try to be simple as much as you can. Try to be a safe doctor and ABC is a First and important thing, I think no interview will not end without asking you something about how to deal with the patient through the ABCD approach. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Like every patient has a simple approach, ABCD. So I think it's that's a very, very standard system in the UK. Like be it any specialty, they would still go by the same procedure. So yes, that that's a good suggestion. Uh, all right. So if you don't mind me asking like how many times that you have to you know you set for an interview or like you had to struggle for an interview like uh if you want me to tell you my story actually i applied to 250 or 300 job over a period of two to three months yeah that's true okay and i uh, I managed to have my job actually in my second interview. Uh, yeah, uh, I got uh, I did about um, twelve interviews. I received about six job offers actually. And why I'm telling that to people? I'm telling that to people to tell them that it's easy to find a job in the UK. It's not that difficult because most of people asking me we are struggling to secure an interview. We are struggling to find our first job. I didn't face the same. Actually, as I told you, uh, 12 interview and about six job offers. And uh, actually, the job I'm going to is was my second second interview. Well, that, that's easy, great to hear. Just that's... try to be calm. Just tr tr try to be calm and try to get prepared well for your interview. Uh, another advice I want to, uh, to give people about the interview, you have to read well about the trust you are going to, you have to read well about the city you are moving to, because when you give the consultant an idea that you, you've read well about the hospital and you know how it's going, how the atmosphere is there, how is the, how is the city itself, it will give them an idea that you are really very interested about the job, about the job and you want it. Yeah, because that's the confusion I had, you know, I, I was going through a recruitment phase. So I mixed up the mails uh, and apparently the interview I gave at the first site, I was not knowing anything about the hospital. And then and the other consultant was like, w why are you even sitting here? Like, yeah. Yeah, he will ask you why you want to join us. Uh, if you don't know about the city, you are trying to move to, you, are, you don't know about the hospital, you are trying to, order. so why you want to join us? Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. And I think that's a very, very, you know, common shortcoming for most of the candidates because, you know, they, they don't know the background of the hospital or the area they're going. And that, I think, reduces their marks, like, overall in the getting selection. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so before, like, we end up our wonderful session, what are your, like, take-home tips or, you know, top tips for the candidates who want to come through the internal medicine to the Royal College of Physicians? Uh, I think you have to increase your field of experience uh, in, in working in internal medicine in general, and especially the acute and emergency cases of your speciality. Because when a consultant have an interview, has an interview with you, he will mostly ask you about things related to the emergency situations related to your speciality. So 
get prepared for uh, emergency situations in your specialty, whatever uh, your specialty or your subspecialty. Try to read well, try to get prepared well for your interview. And uh, regarding your, b b even before your interview, in your CV, you have to mention some points related to the acute situations of your specialty in particular. This will help you to find uh, an interview and to pass the interview safely. All right, great, great, great. But that's actually a very, very inspiring thing that you told that you applied for so many positions relentlessly like you applied. It's very, very good that you got it in the second one. But that's what I want to convey to people that, uh, you know, you need to work hard for this. This may get yes. easy if you're following the right steps like you've advised in your videos. So I think, yes, it's quite achievable, but uh, people need to work hard on it. That, that's what I feel like. Yeah. Uh, because uh, recently I was approached by a few, few of the colleagues eh, who, who could not get selected in the interviews and they were very, very down with it, you know, like, oh, this is the end of the world. I did say them, like, up, keep applying. That's, uh, you know, bottom line, what yes. I feel. You should keep applying. Yes. Just not give up with two, three interviews, I think. As you said, like, you had applied for so many places. All right. Yeah. So, um, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, someone asked me, uh, I couldn't find an interview. Uh, uh, I've been applying for maybe one year now. I told him, for how many jobs have you applied through this year? He told me about 20 jobs, 25 jobs, something like that. I, I told him I applied to 250 to 300 <laughs> jobs over two or three months only. So you have to widen your scope and try to get whatever job you you find in i mean in your first job just put your legs in the uk after that it will be much open for you yeah yeah that, that that's the, the spirit should be high yeah because if you're coming to the uk you should be that determined that that's what you're saying all right dr khalid so it was a great talk having you on the show uh, keep making the videos they're absolutely brilliant so dr yes. khalid uh, himself has Thank a you. youtube channel on his name so you can just surf like uh, I will provide a link on my video and about his channel. And uh, so if you have any doubts, you can approach me on UK Dreamers. I'm Dr. Aman, or you can approach Dr. Khalid who will be joining us soon in the UK. So with that, I think we should uh, just uh, finish the video and wish good luck to everyone who's coming. Thank you for having me today. And I really uh, appreciate that your <laughs> host and I hope that we will do another video later in the future Surely, to Dr. Khalid, explain more about collaboration the on. so thank you so much guys yeah. thank you so much for watching the thank videos you. do share it subscribe to the channels of dr khalid and me you could dreamers so let's it let's meet you in the uk take care cheers bye bye